Hey everybody, welcome to Worship with First Baptist Church. As you can see, today we're going to have the Lord's Supper together. I love it. Anytime you see the table spread because it's a day that you taste and see that the Lord is good. It's a day to participate, not just observe. So I want to invite you into it today. Let me give you a verse to frame our time together. In Psalm 116, this is part of the Psalms of Ascent, the great Hallel of Israel. It says this, Psalm 116, verse 12. What shall I return to the Lord for all the goodness He has done to me? It says, I will lift up the cup of salvation. I will call on the name of the Lord. Let me pray that over you. Father, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, would you help us to remember all the good that you've done for us, all the good that you've done for our families, all the ways you've blessed us and protected us. And Father, I know in this moment that there are people who, who have suffered and are suffering. And Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you would intervene, that you would, that you would, that you would come to the rescue. Father, I know most of us, a lot of us, are sitting in relative comfort. And God, what shall we give to you? What shall we return to you because of the goodness you've done? Lord, in Jesus' name, we lift up the cup of salvation and we call on the name of the Lord. So Palm Sunday, the Sunday before Easter, always on Palm Sunday as a church, we share the Lord's Supper together. It's part of the way we make sure that our hearts are ready for Easter. It's part of the way that we recognize that Easter did not come cheap and it did not come easy. That there was a price that was paid for Jesus to go all the way to the cross, all the way to the resurrection. Palm Sunday gets its name from Matthew chapter 21 and passages like it that describe the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. And it keys into the Hillel of Israel, those Psalms 113 through 118, the Psalms of Ascent, because everyone was making their way to Jerusalem. Everybody was on their way to worship. As Jesus was making His way into Jerusalem, He told His disciples, Go ahead of me, and you'll find a donkey and the foal tied up. Get them and bring them to me. And if anyone stops you, it says, if anyone stops you, just say to them, the master has need of them, and he'll send them right away. The disciples did exactly what the Lord told them to do. And when they brought the colt, they put their own cloaks, their own, their own jackets and shirts, they put them right on the donkey, and Jesus climbed aboard. And he goes into Jerusalem, and the people, they, they cut the branches, the willow branches, the palm branches, and they begin, to, they begin to cry out as Jesus comes, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, highest heaven. And I'd really like us to focus on that one word just for a couple minutes. Hosanna. Hosanna. It sounds like a word of worship. It reminds me of hallelujah, right? Hosanna, hallelujah. Beautiful word, beautiful word, praise word. A, a, a word that, that just, it brings joy when you think of it. But that's not how the word started. Actually, the word hosanna is a prayer. And instead of being a, a, a word of worship, it's a word of desperation. What it literally means is, Lord save us. All those people who were gathered on the road, all those people who were watching Jesus come into Jerusalem, they were all crying out with one prayer, we're in desperate need. We've got a problem and we can't solve it. Help, Lord, help. And that's literally what the word Hosanna means. Lord, save us. Lord, save us. And frankly, that's exactly what God had sent His Son to do. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's what God did when He sent Jesus for us. That's what Jesus did when He made His way all the way to the cross. He was answering our prayers. Lord, save us. And that's what we're reminded of when we come to the Lord's Supper. The Lord's Supper, communion, you've heard it called a lot of different things. It's the bread, it's the cup, it's a reminder of the body broken for us, it's a reminder of the blood shed for us, it's a reminder of just how much it cost the Father in the life of His Son 
to bring sons and daughters to himself. So let me invite you to, to take a look with me at, at 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And maybe this is a place that you may want to pause the video and, and find this so that you can prepare your own time of worship. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, Paul says, uh, verse 23, he says, I receive from the Lord what I also pass on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, it says, after supper, he took the cup. In the same way, we, we believe, in the same way, meaning, with a prayer of thanksgiving. He took the cup and he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. In fact, I'd like to invite you into that right now. Now, we've just got these cups of grape juice. They're special cups set aside. I mean, it's not our everyday stuff, but we kind of wanted to make this special. The bread, it's... It's nothing special. It's just a piece of flat bread. But the point of it is to remind us when we give thanks and when we break it of Jesus' body broken for us. So let me invite you into this. You may want to take some time to, to pause and give thanks for your own self. The night Jesus was betrayed, He took bread, and when He had given thanks, He broke it. So let's give thanks together for the broken body of Jesus. Join me in this one. Oh, Father. Thank you so much that you have done for us what only you could do. Jesus, thank you. I remember it says it was for the glory set before you that you endured the cross. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you loved us that way, that you would give your back to the smiters and your face to those who would pluck out the beard. Lord, your body broken, and for that we are grateful. In Jesus' name, amen. So. Let me invite you to take the element that you've brought out to represent the body of Christ, the body broken for us. This do in remembrance of me. Usually, when we're at church, we use these tiny little pieces of bread. And I remember thinking when I was a kid, if I ever had a, something to say about it, I'd rather have a big piece of bread so that you could really sink your teeth into it and be reminded of just how powerful the gift of Jesus is. You do whatever it takes for you to be reminded of just how powerful it is what Christ has done for you. Eat this bread in remembrance of Jesus. And then in the same way it says, after supper, he took the cup. In the same way, we'll pray now. Join me in this prayer. Oh, Lord Jesus, your word says that without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. If not for this, if not for this gift of your life, this gift of your blood, we could never be washed clean. Your word says that it's because our hearts have been sprinkled with the blood of Jesus that we go boldly before the throne of grace. And so, Lord, we say, Thank you for doing for us what we could never do for ourselves. In Jesus' name, amen. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. And he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Again, when we do this at church, it's usually those tiny little cups, barely a swallow. But in a time like this, you can have the opportunity to drink as much as you want, to be reminded that His grace is more than enough for you in your life. I want to bring you back to something. In, in Matthew, it says the people when they had seen all this, when Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and they asked, who is this? Well, we're living in a time when our entire nation, our whole world is stirred. 
And people like you and me who have found some hope in Christ, there may be people in your life who are asking, who is this that you find hope? Our world is upside down. Things are out of control. We don't even know where the enemy is. And yet you find peace. You find rest in your soul. You find hope in the middle of these rituals and these remembrances. And there may be people in your life who look at you in the midst of all this Hosanna, come save us, Lord. They look at you and they say, who is this you're finding hope in? The whole city was stirred and they asked, who is this? And the crowds answered, you and I, we get to answer. This is Jesus, Jesus, whose name literally means rescuer, savior, the one who came to set us free. That's what we remember when we have the bread and the cup. That's what we celebrate at Easter. And that's what I want to invite you into now. A prayer that becomes a praise, Hosanna, and an explanation that can bring peace, not only to you, but to the people you love. This is Jesus. I love you, and I love being your pastor. See ya.
together as strangers, neighbors, our blood is one. The children of generations of every nation of kingdom come. So don't let your heart be troubled. Kingdom. 